Hi everyone, Martin here. Welcome to the Inner Loop. In this series of videos, I think it's going to be about four or five, I'm going to talk about my Pico drone. It's actually an electronic music device based on a Raspberry Pi Pico. It's got 14 oscillators inside its head and uh, it makes kind of droning sounds. I think I built it because I wanted to see what the Raspberry Pi Pico is actually capable of in terms of using up as much of its resources in terms of CPUs, pins uh, and everything else and also just as an as a intellectual exercise and a little project. I'll show you over the device now and you can have an actual little look at the hardware and what I've actually come up with. It's got 14 switches here, one for each of the oscillators. It's got a mode switch here and a select switch. It's got four LEDs it's got three pots and then here's the actual Raspberry Pi, the Pi Pico development board. There's the Pico and then on there there's 14 resistors, a little 3.3 volt regulator and an op amp and that creates the uh, little voltage variable resistor and that creates the the output inside here. Um, there's a number of just really the back of the switches. So there's all the back of the switches there. Uh, there's some diodes buried away in there and then a little power supply from the 3.3 volts. This one, this one here. This runs across to all the three pots just to provide the uh, sort of 0 to 3 volts. So these three wires from the pots, one, two, three, go into the three A to D pins on the Pi Pico. But much more about the hardware later, but that's the, the basic thing. There's a USB cable here for, essentially only for power. And then these three wires here go to my Raspberry Pi 4 which are the SWD or software debug wires. This enables me to actually write the code and squirt it into the Pico. You can do it over the USB, but the SWD is a lot easier. Okay, that's the basic hardware layout. Let's have a look now at the block diagram. The block diagram really relates to the software that lives inside it, or firmware in this case. Um, so let's have a little look through that and see what all the individual parts are and then how that might go together to actually make some sound. First thing is the oscillator section. There's 14 oscillators and as I said in the introduction, seeing how many oscillators the, the Pico could calculate in one go was actually one of the intellectual exercises. The oscillator section consists of a couple of voices, a saw wave and a triangle wave. There's a wave shaper, there's a wave shaper phase and there's an octave phase, which basically changes the pitch. Then there's a mixer section. This is where we go down from 14 oscillators down to one output. The mixer is actually con controlled by the attack, decay, sustain, release section here. They join directly together. So mixing the oscillations together and also changing their amplitude based on the key presses uh, is what those two sections do. And then there's the filter section. This is a, a low pass filter and it just takes away some of the, the sharp edgy noise from the, from the, from the saw and, saw and uh, triangle waves. There's a delay. I mean everything always sounds better with a bit of reverb. It's quite a simple delay and it can be just a, a either just a single delay or actually a loop. The final thing is uh, on this section is the digital to analog converter and an output stage which sends the the voltage out to a, out to a, a line output type jack. That's one half, one logical half. The second half uh, are all the things that actually deliver the logic and actually make it work. Things like a sequencer here. A sequencer records the key presses and then just plays them back. 
but also um, it can speed them up and, and also be random, so be slightly unreliable. There's an LFO here, which is connected to the Octaver, which which enables a kind a bit of uh, vibrato type uh, action. We've talked about the ADSR, the attack to case, the tone release. It gives you the makes the keys actually work. There's another LFO, which connects to the filter. Doesn't really do much more than add uh, a tremolo effect, kind of a, a twiddling of the volume. This section here, all of this lot, is really much more concerned about dealing with the hardware, about how do I deal with 16 key, with 14 keys, two select buttons, four LEDs, um, when I only have a limited number of actual connections into the Raspberry Pi. There's some pots, analog pots, three of them. Again, we need the logic here to decide what those pots are actually going to do and, and kind of multiplex their functionality. And the final thing is the actual logic. This is the thing that that holds all of this together and delivers um, delivers all the control to the actual oscillators. So there we are, a little rundown on the run down on the block diagram. You can see it's really a kind of hard-wired synthesizer. There's no opportunity to repatch the LFO to anything else or um, or to to or to twiddle the filter in any other way than via the hardwired logic that I've already built. Well thank you very much for watching. As I start to unravel more and more parts of this device, what I want to do is to invite questions below. There's plenty of different things I can talk about in terms of how the, D the digital to analog converter works or the details of some of the code. Um, I'd really appreciate your comments because based on them, I can, I can tune this series to really whatever you want to, whatever you want to know about. This wasn't really a device that I designed to be used for some kind of live performance or any kind of other um, to be used to live performance or really any kind of actual music making. It was more a kind of co demonstrator of different concepts. And I hope that people out there who are into coding or into doing stuff with Raspberry Pi would be kind of interested in this and maybe stimulated by some of the ideas and it might even give some people some shortcuts in terms of trying to do something similar. So thanks for watching. I'll look out for your comments below and uh, we'll go on from there. In the next episode I'm going to talk about the oscillators and how I coded them and how they work. So I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching and I'll look out for your comments below.